morning, everyone, and thank you for the introduction, Professor Don. So this work is about developing methods for processing trust uh, between drivers and automated vehicles, or AVs, in order to improve their collaboration and overall safety and performance. So for this presentation, we'll follow this agenda, uh, starting with an introduction, then going through the literature background, and then I will present uh, the four contributions of my dissertation, and finally briefly present the conclusions of this work. So I think we can start. Yeah, and we can start by stating something obvious. Well, trust is a hot topic in human-robot interaction, and there are many evidences of that. First, uh, we can take a look at this book that was released eight months ago, or we can think of the attention that the topic res, uh, has received in the HRI 2021 conference. So I had the opportunity uh, to be a pioneer on that conference, and everybody was talking about trust. And, well, trust is really important because it mediates the relationships between humans and between humans and machines. So we need to trust machines to rely on them appropriately. And as traditional automated systems evolve uh, into robots, their perception technologies are, evol are evolving as well. So in the future, robots will be able to understand and to adapt to humans' trust. So our high-level goal uh, in this dissertation is to extend and to explore the state-of-the-art knowledge on trust, and we want to um, use uh, this trust knowledge uh, to solve problems that will emerge uh, when people interact with robots, especially in the AV domain, where people will be the drivers and robots will be the automated vehicles. Therefore, uh, what we want to do uh, is to propose new methods to process trust. And I have mentioned some HRI-related problems. So what kind of problems would be those? And I can think of at least two problems. The first one, the problem of reducing or avoiding trust miscalibrations, where trust miscalibrations are these large differences uh, between the human's trust and the machine's capabilities. So we want to avoid uh, these trust uh, miscalibrations calibrations because they're likely to lead to inappropriate reliance. Uh, as we can see here in these figures, uh, where overtrust is leading to a misuse of the vehicle and the undertrust is leading to the disuse of the vehicle. And the second problem that we can think of is the problem of assigning control authority between a human and a robot. So we want to dynamically allocate tasks between a human and a robot, considering their different capabilities and trust. And well, to solve uh, those HRI related problems, uh, we try to answer a few fundamental questions that motivate our research. So the first one being, how does risk affect AV trust and driver's trusting behaviors? How can we estimate uh, driver's trust in AVs? How can we influence and calibrate uh, driver's trust in AVs? And finally, how can we use trust uh, to assign tasks between a human and an automated system, in particular an AV? And well, my contributions to the HRI field uh, stem from the work on answering those fundamental questions. So we can summarize my contributions as being the characterization of how risk factors affect the driver's trust in automated driving systems or the ADSs, the development of a method for real-time driver's ADS trust estimation, the development of a method for the driver's ADS trust calibration, and finally, uh, the development of a bidirectional trust model. However, uh, as this first contribution is shared uh, with another student and the following two contributions were covered on my RTP or my research thesis proposal, I'll focus more on this last uh, contribution and present it in deeper details. Okay, so moving on to the background section, we know that trust has been studied in distinct domains, uh, such as uh, what is shown in these figures here. And in general, uh, trust is related to the willingness uh, just of someone to be vulnerable to the actions of others. Uh, and in our case, uh, trust in the ADS is the willingness of the driver to be vulnerable to the actions of the ADS. 
which are uh, to drive the vehicle and to alert uh, the driver about road hazards ahead. And when we relate trust and ADSs uh, with non-driving related tasks or NDRTs, we must think that with the ADSs, which are the systems that characterize the AVs, drivers can safely disengage from driving and then turn their attention to the NDRT. And some researchers try to promote a better NDRT performance and to determine the most effective interfaces to support the NDRT. And the idea behind this is that the more uh, the drivers trust the ADS, the more they will focus on the NDRT and the better they will perform on that NDRT. Okay, so to some extent, uh, the literature supports that trust is driven by contextual situational awareness and risk perception. And there may be different roles for risk or for perceived risk uh, on trust in ADSs. And this makes us think about the different types of risk and how they might affect trust. So this relationship between risk and trust may be relatively complex, uh, such as what is proposed by Meyer and colleagues, who consider that a reasonable level of risk is needed for trust to really induce trusting behaviors. And talking about uh, trust in automation and trusting robots, we can also uh, always remember that trust in automation was derived from theories on human-human trust. And considering that robots are more advanced automated systems, uh, researchers have proposed uh, scales for trust in robots instead. So we can see this line of evolution here uh, from trust between humans to trust in automation and then to trust in robots. But what is really important for us here is the general trust definition by C that says that trust is the attitude that an agent will help someone achieve their goals in a situation that is characterized by uncertainty and vulnerability. Well, and speaking of trust dynamics and trust estimation, we know that trust evolution depends not only on the trust condition on a specific time instance, and also on the trustor's experiences with the trustee. And several works have considered these aspects to model trust dynamics and to estimate trust. However, uh, these previous approaches were not really appropriate for self-driving vehicles. And this is one of the gaps that we try to fill with our research. Well, another important aspect of trust is that of trust calibration. So we know that people's trust in automated systems must be well calibrated, uh, which means that it must be aligned with the system's capabilities. And there are new sensing technologies that can pave the way for new trust calibration strategies in the sense that the systems can perceive and then process trust uh, and then try to modify their own behaviors uh, to increase or decrease trust accordingly. So given that situation awareness and perceived risk uh, impact trust, we can try to influence these other factors here with verbal communications and eventually try to influence trust. And, uh, well, the last subtopic I'd like to talk about in this background section is the topic of bidirectional trust. So, in more advanced HRI settings, uh, where you have humans and robots working together, and the robot uh, reacts to the human actions, we may consider not only the human's trust in the robot, but also the robot's trust in the human. So we need to develop uh, trust models that will be useful and needed in planning and decision-making algorithms for those robots. And there are some models that have already been proposed in previous research, the most important for us being optimal and source models. Excuse me. Okay, so now uh, we can start talking about my contributions and I'll start with the study where we analyzed trust, risk and trusting behaviors. So, well, in this study, our research gap was related to the fact that the relationship between the ADS trust and driver's trusting behaviors has been studied before. However, there are different views about perceived risk and its impacts on trust in the literature. So to understand uh, these effects of risk on promoting the ADS trust and trusting behaviors, we designed a two by two within subject study. 
So this study was conducted uh, with my former Maverick lab mate, Hua Jin, and it was published uh, in the Transportation Research Part C journal. Uh, and well, important to note here, uh, we have contributed equally for this work. All right, so in this study, uh, we simulated an SAE level three ADS, which meant uh, that the vehicle could drive itself in specific conditions. And uh, the driver had to be the fallback ready user of the vehicle and had to be able to take over uh, the control of driving after being requested by the AV. So we manipulated two types of risk, the internal risk, uh, which is given by low ADS uh, reliability, uh, and that was represented by false alarms, and the external risk, uh, which is given uh, by low visibility, uh, where we simulated a foggy weather in our simulation. So we had a research framework uh, with six hypotheses here, which is given in this figure. And as we can see, uh, we want to uh, check the impact of risks uh, on ADS trust, and also the moderating effects of risk on the relationships between trust and trusting behaviors. And well, our methodology in this study consisted in having two tasks that were simultaneously assigned to the participants. So we had the driving task and the non-driving related task, which was a visual search task. And well, in this driving task, uh, we had the participants uh, having encounters with obstacles on the road, which were nothing more than stopped vehicles. And uh, they had to take the control of the vehicle and maneuver around these obstacles. So uh, the driver had to decide when to take over the control of the vehicle. And then after passing the obstacle, they had to decide uh, to relinquish control to the vehicle again. And in parallel, uh, in the NDRT, the participants had to search for the Q character on a field of O char characters. And uh, they scored one point for each Q that they had found. So, and also uh, interesting to note, uh, they have a penalty here if they do not take control of the vehicle in time and let the emergency stop be triggered. Oh, also interesting to note, in the real experiment, we did not have this red arrow. So obviously the participants really had to look uh, to find out the, the Q character. Okay, so we investigated uh, the relationships among risk, trust, NGRT performance, and the ADS monitoring ratios using linear mixed effects models. And uh, with this analysis, uh, we found out that we had three supported hypotheses from our framework, and three of the hypotheses were not supported. Uh, but the main takeaways or the key takeaways uh, for us in this study are that the internal risk uh, decreased trust, while the external risk did not. The internal risk uh, moderated the uh, impact of ADS trust on NDRT performance, while the external risk did not, and uh, the internal risk did not moderate uh, the impact of the ADS trust on monitoring, but the external risk did. So, well, in summary, uh, the type of risk really matters here, and the different types of risk have different impacts on different trusting behaviors. And obviously, uh, these conclusions can be incorporated in trust models, such as those uh, that are important for trust estimation, uh, as we will see in this next contribution where we developed a framework for estimating the driver's trust in the ADSs or AVs. Okay, so we know that trust is usually measured uh, with self-reported answers from the trust store agent, but this is not really practical in HRI. Uh, in HRI especially in driver AV interaction settings. So uh, therefore, we can apply classical state estimation techniques for estimating trust as what is proposed uh, in the literature. However, uh, the existing methods are not always appropriate uh, for the vehicular environment. So the psychophysiological sensing technologies uh, sense, uh, such as 
Galvanic skin response or electroencephalograms are too obtrusive uh, to be used in vehicles. Therefore, uh, we developed a method uh, for trust estimation and we designed an experiment to validate uh, this method. And we published a paper about this study on the International Journal of Social Robotics. Okay, so our problem in this study was to estimate the driver's trust in the ADSs from the driver's behaviors and actions in real time. So we wanted to capture the continuous trust estimates, avoiding the obtrusive sensors and the process of repeatedly asking drivers about their trust level. So the proposed solution is to apply a common filter with the observation variables that could be correlated with trust. And here we chose the NDRT focus uh, time ratio, the ADS usage time ratio, and the NDRT performance. So we designed a, a four by two mixed human subjects experiment where the between subjects conditions are the ADS error types and uh, the within uh, subjects conditions are the road shapes, which could be curvy or uh, straight. And the tasks in this new experiment were like the previous experiment, but now we had two road shapes, as I said, straight and curvy. And we also had misses on the driving simulation and not only false alarms as we had uh, before. And well, considering the results of our estimation framework, here we have some plots of the observation variables over time uh, with marks on the specific interactions, uh, which represent true alarms, false alarms, and misses, uh, here given in the key by L, F, and M. And, well, in general, all the observation variables were correlated with trust, as we have expected. And it's important to note here that the accuracy of, or the accuracy of the estimates improved uh, over the interactions. So as we can see here, this black curve, which gives us the best trust estimation, gets uh, closer to the red dashed curve, which is the ground truth for trust. Uh, and it gets better over time. And so um, as we can see here, uh, this estimator was really able to track the self-reported trust level. And thus, we have reached our goal of estimating trust. And interesting to note here, uh, to implement this estimator on a real vehicle, we would depend only on having an eye tracking uh, system and having the integration of the ADS and the tasks uh, that were executed by the driver. All right. So given that we know now how to estimate trust, we can start thinking about how can we influence trust and eventually how can we calibrate trust in real time so that we avoid uh, the inappropriate reliance on the AVs. And uh, well, as I have mentioned before, a calibrated level of trust is fundamental for the driver and the AV to collaborate as in a team. So the systems in general, especially the EVs, can estimate user's trust and try to react to it in order to recalibrate trust. And for this, we already have the first piece, which is the trust estimator uh, that we were uh, presenting uh, in the last slides. So what we need now is a system that will calibrate trust to us. And the system must be able to, uh, to communicate with the system user, which in our case is the driver, and avoid these trust miscalibrations. So we have proposed a trust calibrator, which is presented uh, on a paper that we have published in the Robotics and Automation uh, Letters Journal, or RAL. 
And well, in this specific study or in this specific contribution, our problem was to identify instances uh, for which the driver's trust uh, were miscalibrated uh, and then uh, to influence trust uh, to increase or decrease whenever the drivers uh, were under trusting the vehicle or over trusting the vehicle. So we implemented a different simulation, uh, which had a circuit track with three parts, straight part, curvy part, and dirt part. And the AV's capabilities were really reflected uh, by those road parts. And we had the perception range of the collision alarm of the vehicle being shorter for the harder situations, uh, such as the curvy road and the dirt road. And well, interesting to note here, we have this block diagram representing the trust calibration or the trust management system or framework. And trust for us was the output of the trust estimator, which was the last contribution we talked about. And so in this calibrator system, to identify the trust miscalibrations, the trust estimates were compared with the AV's capabilities that were reflected by the road parts, as I had mentioned. So both trust and the AV's capabilities were classified into three categories, uh, low, medium, and high. And this facilitated the comparisons uh, between trust and capabilities. Uh, with these comparisons, we were able to identify when the, uh, the drivers were under-trusting the vehicle or over-trusting the vehicle, as we can see here in this uh, specific uh, comparisons. And trust eventually was influenced by communications from the vehicle to the driver. Uh, and these uh, communications or messages had different encouraging uh, and warning content and different styles. So, for example, if the driver was under-trusting the vehicle, the vehicle would say, hey, this is an easy road. You don't need to worry about driving. I'll take care of it while we focus on finding the cues. Or in this extreme uh, uh, opposite situation here, uh, where the drivers would be extremely over-trusting the vehicle, the vehicle would say, hey, look, I told you, I do need your attention. I can feel the road is terrible, and I don't know if I can keep us totally safe. Okay, so with this management or trust management framework, we designed uh, an experiment to validate the framework. And in this experiment, all participants experienced one trial with the calibrator and one trial without the calibrator. So our results uh, show that the decreasing uh, that the drivers re reacted to the messages as expected, increasing their trust level if, uh, after being encouraged by the vehicle and decreasing their trust level uh, after being warned. So the average trust miscalibration time ratio was really reduced uh, from approximately 70% uh, when the calibrator was not being used to 43% uh, when the calibrator was being used. So that represented a reduction of approximately 40% of trust miscalibrations. And well, to summarize, we can see here uh, that the AV communication style and content can really help drivers to calibrate their trust. And uh, the main applicability of this trust uh, management system is to let the AV perceive uh, the driver's trust and react accordingly. Uh, so eventually enhancing the collaboration between the vehicle and uh, the driver. Okay, so as I mentioned in the introduction, this next contribution is the development of a bidirectional trust model for natural and artificial trust. Uh, this is the fourth and last contribution of this dissertation, and this is the one uh, contribution that I will focus more on and present in deeper details. So usually uh, in HRI, uh, the trustor is the human party uh, while the trustee is the robot. 
But for the dynamic task allocation problem that we have mentioned in the introduction, uh, we would need to consider not only the human's trust, but also the robot's trust. And well, this can be seen here in this figure where we have a list of tasks and a specific task uh, can be executed by the human or by the robot. So here we can have the robot um, trusting the human to execute the task, uh, which is represented by tau of age, gamma k and tk, uh, going to one, so being approximately one, which is a high trust. Or we could also have the robot predicting that the human would not trust it to execute the task, uh, for instance. And this situation is represented by tau of r, gamma k and tk going to zero, which means that it is uh, a low trust level. Uh, so we have the scale of trust from zero to one. And well, we need a bidirectional trust model that can be used uh, to represent not only the human's natural trust, but also the robot's artificial trust to represent this uh, trust in these situations. So we propose a model that is based on the representations of the agent's capabilities and on task requirements. And we published a paper about this model also in RAL. Okay, so to develop this model, our context was that of a human age and the robot R, excuse me, uh, and this human age and robot R must execute uh, a sequence of tasks that are invisible. So each of the agents will be in the position of a trustor or trustee. And uh, from previous experiences, the trustor has some knowledge about the trustee's capabilities. So this knowledge is really uh, what lets the trustor assess how likely is the trustee to succeed or to fail in the execution of a task. And well, this reasoning about uh, task requirements and how to form trust in the trustee is the process that we want to represent with our bidirectional trust model. And so uh, we need to define uh, some terms and variables uh, to develop our model. And the most important definitions here are the definition of a task, which can be represented by gamma at a space capital, capital gamma. And this represents uh, the general task features description. We have the agent, which can be uh, a human or the robot. Uh, we have capabilities, which are represented uh, in a scale from zero to one. And the capability hypercube, which is basically the Cartesian product of these capabilities. Uh, important definitions here are the definition of uh, the capability transform or the agent's capability transform which maps the agents into their capabilities and the task requirements transform, uh, which maps a task into the required capabilities for the execution of that task. So it's basically the same space that in that we are representing capabilities of the agents and task requirements. We have the time, uh, which is important for us to implement the dynamics of our processes. And we have a task outcome uh, which can represent a failure or a success with zero or one as outcomes. But, well, what is more important to us here is really the definition of trust. So for us uh, in this situation, trust would be the trust that an agent A will execute the task gamma at the time T. And this is the probability that uh, the outcome of the task is a success. And we must compute uh, this trust, considering that the capabilities are not really deterministic and uh, that there is a belief space over the capabilities hypercube. Okay, so as we can see here uh, from the equation of our model, this model depends on a function to represent trust given the trustee's capabilities and on a process to dynamically update the trustor belief over the trustee capabilities. 
So our basic assumptions here is that if we have an agent uh, that successfully executes a task, uh, this agent is likely to succeed on less demanding tasks. And if the agent fails on a task, then the same agent is likely to fail on more demanding tasks. Oh, sorry. So, yes, we, uh, yeah, we have the trust given the agent's capabilities and the belief over the agent's capabilities here. Um, and, well, talking about the function to represent uh, trust given the agent's capability, we can adapt uh, the sigmoid function here for each capability dimension in the hypercube, and we will have a trust component given by tau i. So we define uh, two parameters, which we call pragmatism and skepticism, and that can be tuned for each agent in each capability dimension. So this means that uh, considering, for instance, that a trustor agent uh, knows for a fact that the capability of the trustee agent is 0 0.5, if uh, that trustor is not pragmatic and not skeptical, the trustor believes uh, that trust is high for basically any tasks with any requirements level. If the trustor agent is not pragmatic but is very skeptical, uh, trust is uh, it will be low uh, for all tasks at all requirements levels, as we can see here in this curve. And if the trust or agent is very pragmatic and not very skeptical, trust will be high for every task with requirements lower than 0 0.5, but will have a reasonable level for tasks with higher requirements, as we can see in this curve. And finally, uh, if that trust or agent is very pragmatic and very skeptical, trust will be high only for uh, tasks with requirements way lower than 0 0.5 and will start dropping even for capability requirements close to 0 0.5. So assuming uh, that each dimension is independent from the others, we can compute trust uh, considering all capability dimensions, and we just need to calculate the product of all trust uh, dimensions. And now the second part of the model is that process of updating the belief over the agent's capabilities. And uh, to update uh, this belief, we implement an algorithm that represents the following process. So imagine that we have a task with a requirement that falls below the capability belief lower limit, or this task is considered easy for that trustee agent. So when the agent succeeds, there's no big surprise. It was an easy task. And we don't need to change anything on the capability belief uh, distribution. However, if the agent fails on a task that was supposed to be less demanding than their capability, we extend the capability to the left, concluding that the agent is actually less capable than we had originally thought. Uh, okay. And if the test requirements uh, fall in between the capability belief limits, uh, we have a reasonable task. So when the agents succeed or fail in tasks inside their capability belief limits, we skew the capability belief to, to the corresponding side. So to the right, uh, when the agent succeeds, or to the left, when the agent uh, fails. So we are here narrowing uh, the belief over the agent's capability and getting a better idea of the agent's actual capability. And when we have a task that falls to the right of the upper limit of the capability belief, we actually have a hard task for that agent. So if the agent succeeds on that hard task, we extend the capability belief to the right and we conclude that the agent is actually more capable than we thought originally. And when the agent fails, there's no big surprise and we don't need to change the capability belief distribution. 
Okay, so to use uh, our model for determining the artificial trust or the robot trust in a trustee agent, uh, instead of using uh, those functions and, those, uh, and that process for updating the capability belief, we can make uh, tau i an analytic approximation of the decreasing step function from one to zero. And then to compute trust, we must use our model equation, taking the product of these two functions here, and then the integral, which is basically a convolution operation that we are doing here. And as a result, what we have is trust being one for everything below Li, zero for everything above Ui, and then uh, trust continuously decreasing uh, as a ramp uh, for everything in between Li and Ui. And all of this happens for one specific dimension. So for all the dimensions, we must compute the product of all those components. And so uh, given uh, these artificial trust model characteristics, how would the robot really identify the trustee's capabilities? So robots can use the long-term uh, storage information about humans' performances on different tasks. And, and they can use it to compute a trust approximation, tau hat here, by discretizing the capabilities hypercube and then dividing the number of test successes uh, over the total number of test outcomes. So successes over successes and failures. And then uh, the capability belief limits in each dimension can be computed by solving a minimization problem. So with a higher number of task outcomes, obviously we will have a better trust approximation to our head and it will become easier to numerically compute L, I, uh, L hat I and U hat I. Okay, so given that we have our model uh, and we have the processes uh, and functions for natural trust prediction and artificial trust computation, we've uh, designed an experiment to validate these models. Especially here, the experiment was useful for validating the natural trust prediction uh, capacity of our model. And this experiment was an online experiment uh, that combined Qualtrics and the Amazon Mechanical Turk platforms. And we used it to collect data to compare our model uh, with other models such as Optimal and SOS model. And in this experiment, the participants watched videos of the AV executing some tasks and evaluated their trust in the AV to execute a different task. So for the experiment, we predefined two capability dimensions, uh, the sensing capability and the processing capability, and asked the participants to assess uh, the tasks in terms of those uh, capability requirements. And as we can see here, we have this video example where uh, a vehicle is trying to park itself. Yeah, so the vehicle is not pretty good uh, in executing the task. And here we can see that the participants uh, experienced uh, failures and successes with the AV. And this is what uh, let the uh, trust be influenced uh, negatively or positively uh, by these experiences. Okay, so after assessing four tasks, uh, the participants observed uh, the AV performing three of these four tasks, which were called the observation tasks. And then they rated their trust level in the AV to execute the fourth remaining task, which was the trust prediction task. And uh, we used our model to predict their trust answers. So what we can see here is that uh, we collected data uh, with the experiment and we assessed the performance of three different trust models, uh, which was uh, the BTM, which is our model, our model, the GP, which is SOS Gaussian process model, 
and OPT, uh, which is optimal. And we assessed the performances of these models with our data set. So what we can see here is that our model, or BTM, outperforms the existing models, GP and OPT. For instance, uh, reducing the mean absolute error for natural trust prediction. And well, I was talking about natural trust prediction only, but we also have some results for the artificial trust computation. So to compute artificial trust, we did not have an experiment, but we had a simulation where we simulated how the model would predict the robot's trust in another trustee agent. So we had two unspecified capability dimensions here represented by lambda one, and lambda two or lambda bar one, lambda bar two. And we have the ground truth uh, of the agent's capability, which is represented by this green star. And well, we can also represent tasks and tasks outcomes in the lambda hypercube, uh, as we can see here, with these outcomes uh, being represented by blue dots and red dots. And finally, we can run optimizations to find the parameters for the belief distributions over lambda one and lambda two. So as I'll try to show with this animation here, we are narrowing down the belief uh, over uh, the capability hypercube to eventually find the green star in the capability hypercube lambda. This is also reflected in the 3D uh, surface representing trust uh, for the tasks with requirements lambda bar one and lambda bar two here. Okay, so just a few discussion points about this uh, model. Uh, so this bidirectional uh, trust model is based on capability representations uh, that can be either performance or non-performance factors that may affect trust. And because of that, uh, this model is useful for representing the robot's trust in human uh, trustees as well. The disadvantage of this model in comparison to to other models is that uh, there is one more subjective input dimension to the trust model, which is the test requirements. But uh, we can say that these test requirements representations are really adequate to capture uh, the difficulty involved uh, in each task. So this is really what makes the BTM model uh, better than the other models that, I, uh, that we have compared it with. Uh, the problem with those other models, GP and OPT, uh, are that those other models are a bit limited in capturing how hard a task is and in establishing similarities and comparisons between those tasks. Also, uh, so far, the artificial trust computation was tested with simulations only, but we can use this model in real-world experiments. And well, in these experiments, we would have a human and a robot working together and executing tasks uh, that could be represented in the capability hypercube. For this, uh, the robot have to compute the expected rewards for the execution of new tasks. And that will depend on the agent. So finally, the robot can assign uh, the tasks to the agent that will have a higher expected reward. Okay, great. So we are reaching uh, the end of our presentation. So I will conclude in just a few slides. So in this talk, I presented my contributions to the HRI field, which can be summarized as uh, the investigations and the characterization of risk factors that affect, uh, affect driver's trust in ADSs or AVs. Uh, the development of a method for trust estimation, the development of a method for trust calibration, and finally, the development of a bidirectional trust model. Also, uh, we can list uh, some limitations of our studies, obviously. Most of them related to the fact that our results for trust estimation and consequently for trust calibration 
calibration could certainly improve with larger data sets or with individualized uh, parameters that could be obtained with longitudinal studies instead of just using the average parameters from several participants uh, as we have done. Also, we implemented our studies in simulated environments and uh, we know that the simulated environments are pretty uh, important for developing new applications, but obviously they have their limitations. So it's pretty hard to reproduce real world risks and driving nuances uh, in these simulated environments. And while well, looking at some directions for future work, uh, the first one, considering uh, the trust calibration framework, so uh, to identify trust miscalibrations, we have only chosen the levels of AV capabilities, but we refrained uh, from defining how those capabilities uh, should be computed. So one direction of research is how to determine the AV's capability in real time for the identification of those trust miscalibrations. And then uh, considering the bidirectional trust model, we can always remember uh, that for the BTM, we just asked people to tell us their personal assessments of test requirements. So how can we define those test requirements and agent capabilities? Well, this is another uh, research direction. And to use the BTM uh, for the dynamic task allocation, we need to define rewards and costs for task execution. So we can ask ourselves, how can we determine and represent rewards or costs for the execution of those tasks? This is also another research direction. Okay, so this is a list of publications from the last uh, three years with the journal papers marked in yellow. And well, this is it. Uh, I'd like to thank uh, my advisors, Professor Don, Professor Lionel, and obviously the committee, Professor Jesse, uh, Professor Nadine, and Professor Brand uh, for the opportunity of presenting my research. Uh, my friends, especially those from the Maverick Lab and those who attended this presentation, and well, my family for all their support and love. And well, thank you very much. I'm open to any questions that you may have.